Hey guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. So this is going to be class four on how to repair ECMs. I want to briefly come back to what we saw on the last part on the class three. Let me open my notes in here. One second. All right. So and also I'm going to start the screen recording. So just please bear with me. There's a lot of us today's class again is going to be on the screen we're getting there to put our hands back into the computers but i definitely want to um, show you a little more of electronics for those that are even a little rusty that haven't worked in electronics for a while or that they haven't worked at all so that's what i wanted to share this with you Hopefully you guys can see I changed a little bit of a uh, lab. I got a new table and some other things that I will show you in the process of this video today. Um, so again, I want to explain a little bit of the pinouts for the 3-5 uh, timer that we use to create the pulse generator. And um, so let me, I will be talking also about the giveaway that I am about to uh, fulfill because it's the I wanted to do it when I reached 10,000 we're around close to 9,000 by now and uh, hopefully we reach the 10,000s and I can do the giveaway for that uh, thermal, uh, thermal camera from Fluke uh, I will be talking about the MOSFETs today and capacitor types and I will be uh, telling you that class 5 uh, it will be about voltage supply circuit on handsome computers and i will also explain while we're there on the computer how the diodes work and the scener diode because those does those are really uh interesting uh, components and i wanted to show you that while we're on the computer because i think it's the best way all right, so everything is good as far as audio and video, so let's just start a class. All right, so I have, as usual, I have some PDF uh, prepare. So the first thing that I want to do is explain um, a little more of uh, the triple five uh, timer, the block diagram for it. So this is hopefully good on the, the screen. That's probably a little too big. Okay, yep. So why the name of the 3.5? Well, as you can see, internals now on this uh, image that I found in the internet, that's not something I did. Um, they call this the triple five because it has, a, you know, five kilo ohm resistors in series inside. It has, you know, some of the internals, like you can see, it has, you know, two uh, gates, uh, one NPN, and they minimize the stuff because otherwise it will be too much but it has what they call the flip-flop and output driver these uh timer the triple five is a very um how can i say it? it's a very capable component and it can be used to many different things so remember we're using it for a pulse generator but we can use it for uh, many other applications it's like i said you know um very capable this one goes from zero volts up to 15 volt maximum, and it can handle uh, only 100 uh, milliamps, which truly is not only is a lot, but if we need to do something else with this one, which again, you can move motors and activate components like you know, a coil or so, then you can use a power MOSFET or a power transistor that will handle the load for this component. But so again, going back to the pin circuitry that uh, I show for the pulse generator, in pins two, uh, sorry, seven, two, and six is what I'm going to call the time circuit. Remember, we have a different diagram that what the normal layout of the pins are, which is what we're seeing here. So we're seeing one, two, three, four, and then five, six, seven, eight. So it's counterclockwise orientation for the pins uh, as far as the component itself it can either have this cut out like a half moon cut out and then number one will be on the left or it will have also the cut out in a dot or just a dot 
that all depends on the fabric and you know, the fabricator so going to the pins so pin one is the ground for the component itself as you will see on on these uh, uh, text that I put together and copy from in the internet again your best friend in here will be Google YouTube my videos uh, again if you are looking into a computer if you're already working on this look for a uh, you know data sheet for components for the capacitor resistors for the controller it's a lot of help in the internet and try to match the numbers or figures sometimes they have removed all the um, uh, numbers from but if you can activate the computer and you start seeing you know like communication lines and fiber referencing then you can start figuring out things but again let's go back to here so pin 2 is the trigger that we're using on our time circuit and as you can see the trigger is a negative input to comp you know to comparator what they call the comparator here number one is the negative input so it's not really the negative it can be lower than plus because that's what the gates work like and i will be explaining that in, in another class how a logic uh, gate works and why is plus and minus and then an output and there is also some other circuitry that we cannot really see here but usually they got a positive and a negative and so on but you'll see that so a negative pulse on this pin says the internal flip-flop when the voltage drop below one to three volts in our case it's a little difference and you'll see but it will cause the output on pin three uh, which is the output of the component that's always going to be the one producing our pulse you know low or high disregards of uh, voltage um, state pin three uh, again i already described that is uh, an output and says the output pin can drive any TTL circuit and is capable of searching or syncing up to 200 milliamps. So I was actually wrong. It's actually up to 200 milliamps of current uh, on the output, equal to approximately BCC 1.5. So small speakers. Maybe it's in this one because I was reading. Um, and please, guys, if I'm running something that I said, please. Uh, 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 check my information and it has to be up to 15 volts because we're using it with 12 volts so this is probably for the speakers or so and it says uh, LEDs or motors if it can be connected directly okay so yeah if you are moving a motor directly with no transistor you know like in the output you can just do what they said in there because that's the output okay um, the pin four is the reset which in this case for the application that we're using and let me actually open that too um i wanted to do it a, a little different but it's okay so this is our application remember this i did some minor changes that you'll see why i did that before but so pin four i was reading let me see yeah, I'm actually a little, again, yeah, pin four is actually uh, connected to power in our case because the application, and this one, it can be used as reset to internal, the flip-flop control the state of the output pin. This is an active low input and is generally connected to a logic one level when not used to prevent any unwanted resetting of the output. So in this case, what it's trying to tell us is that we can use it to reset it or like in the you know, in the pulse generator, I just got it steady, so it's always on, as long as it's power present in there. Uh, pin five, which we have in our circuit going to a capacitor, that's the one I, that I wanted to refer. Is a control voltage. And here we can use it uh, even up to a uh, pulse generator. We're not using it like that. And that's why we're putting that 10 nanofarad uh, capacitor in there just to reset the the uh, the timer and to eliminate noise on our signal too, right? Which also is, is part of what they said in here. Pin six is the threshold. It's also part of like, now, pin two and, and six are very important for our timer circuit that what i call the timer uh, timer cir uh, circuit 
And those are going to be the ones that we will be playing with uh, resistors to change our pulse width. And you'll see in a second when I'm doing that in, in the animation, which I think is for us a lot easier than me putting my computer, I mean, a, a camera over a board and trying to put my pins and so on into a, you know, a proto board like that. I have, and since I start doing this, this is a nice uh, proto board. It's the PV103M from uh, Global Specialties. Really, really good. I like it a lot. Because you can you, know, you can put you know powers three different powers or grounds um, so it's very handy and I had the trainer which is a bigger one is the PV 507 that one is really nice because it has pulse generators it has counters it has a function generator it has power supply and it can actually also produce an AC signal from negative to positive which is very very handy when you're working into uh, signals and uh, or uh, DC motors that go negative and positive. You will you will see when we use that. It has uh, logic switches and some other things that we will be using in further classes. So let's keep going with this. I always try to show more than what I should do. Okay, pin seven is the discharge, which will be working in conjunction with pins two and six for our pulse generator. You can please read the information that is, this is the basic information for the product, uh, for the IC component. And like I said, depends on what you're using or what you're gonna be using it on is what it changes the connections. And it's pretty simple. Pin eight, power, you know, and it says, you know, between 4.5 to 15 volts. So the minimum of uh, four and a half volts, I mean, yeah, zero to 15, that's what I call zero to 15, because if you have less than four and a half, it will, will not work to produce the signals because it's, it needs for the circuitry inside to have no less than four and a half volts. So that's about, you know, the pins on, on the triple five. And let's go now to circuit uh, wizard. And I wanna show you a little bit of what, what I did today with, 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 with the animation. So I, uh, first, remove all the 12 volts rails that I was having in there to have it actually as it should be, you know, all the powers connected to the one power source. And grounds, yes, that's, I think we all understand that grounds can be anywhere in the chassis because that's just the way they are. It's the same thing as in the computer, but usually power is, this is not different rails. We're using one power only. Another change that I did in a cert to just have a 10K resistor, I'm now using a potentiometer, variable resistor, and where R1 and R2 were located. I also put, you know, uh, two volt meters, one uh, before seven, and then one after two and six. So we can see the changes in voltage. Let me run the app, you know, the, the simulation and we can see that you hear it goes from you know let me stop it when one bulb is off uh, actually i just did it exactly where both were off so when bl1 of bulb one is on controlled by the npn transistor remember npn and pmp right here right so we have the high poles yes so the high pulse of the signal is controlling our MPN and the low pulse is controlling our PMP. Remember the center letter tells us the activation signal. Always repeat that information to yourself so can you imprint it on your brain because it's, as soon as you see P, oh, okay, P is gonna be a low signal or, or a, sorry, a high signal and N is gonna be a low signal. So we have an MPN and we have a PNP transistor. So when this one is on, we can see that the voltage right at seven is high. And at two and six, it's as low as truly it will go, which is 3.24 volts. And then that's why this bulb is on and this one is not. The circuitry inside where those two logic uh, gates are there is telling one time that this one Minus is less than positive, so it's, it's a, a zero, and that means it's off. 
and we'll, we will see again classes for those that don't know what that means i will be doing a class on, on logic gates and so on which is part of you know what we're doing and i'm just touching it a little bit i wasn't going to do that but i have a request from one of my subscribers already um sorry if i it's arthur and let me check for his complete uh, name because I wanted to mention him. Oh, not there. Arthur Ficcioni. I hope I say your last name correct. He requests me to talk a little more on the pinouts and connections for the triple five. Again, I wanted to address and say that we have these set up like this for our application for the pulse generator so again coming back to here that's what we see the voltage so i'm going to try to now stop it when the other bulb is on and as you can see now we have bulb two on the voltage that was before in three bulbs and something and it went up to almost six and now the one that was like an eight or so it was high now it's in low which is 1.7 millivolts the output of these um potentiometer right now is in a setting hopefully you yeah hopefully i know you will be seeing that so we have a value of 20,000. i put a value of 20,000. so i will be playing with that value on each one of those potentiometers to change the timing of those signals and we'll be seeing that very very uh, like i mean coming over same thing so i did 50 percent on both so now i'm going to i already have a probe in here for those that already had this software just you know um you can copy if you guys want me just to send you the file just please ask me and i will i can share this file pretty easy it's a small file it's not a problem and um so all you're going to do is you know copy and drag anywhere you want we can put you know two channels or so but i don't want to like for this just one so it's it's a clear graph and that's what i wanted to to show in now so let me clear the data clear results we're going to play it again but i need to see both of those balls yep right there all right so we're going to let it run for a little we can see first of all the waveform i'm going to stop it in a second so we can see that we have a, a, a higher you know the pulse width is is longer uh positive than negative that's the way this is now but if i come here now on on the potentiometer and play with it so i'm going to go to um 30 percent now my our you know resistor one and it start to be 10k is now you know 30 percent of 20,000. so that will be a little less than seven seven k if i run now we have any difference yes so we do have a little difference now the one uh so visible now our poles are higher poles as you can see when higher so if we go the other way which is you know we can play with both resistor one or resistor two so i'm going to make this one go to let's say 80 it's in 78. now let's take a look at this now our higher poles is shorter and that's why i wanted to do it like this so by changing the value of resistor one, we're playing with the high signal, the pulse width of the high signal. As you can see on our graph, the low part is all the same across the board, no matter what we're doing with that first resistor. The second part, which is, or, or the first part, sorry, our high part, which is resistor one, is the one that's being changing, right? So the higher the value of that resistor, the shorter the pulse width. So now I'm going to bring this one back to 50%. Close enough, actually. I should have done this with the keyboard. Or maybe now I can. It's jumping in like big percentage, but 51 is enough. Let me um, 
clear this up. So we work with a clean um, graph. Gonna let it go for a little. Right there. Now, if we play with the body, uh, variable resistor two, and we're going to lower first as we did in the first one, um, 26%, 25, right? Let's play it. So we did have an increase on our low side, as you can see, hopefully on the waveform. And it will be more visible if we reduce the, the higher, but let's, let's keep playing with that one. So I'm going to make it go to like a 10%. Now we're talking. So at 10%, it's, it's changing a lot. And I might be wrong, but it's also affecting us in the high side. And why is that happening? Because this resistor is also after the first resistor. So we do need to change the value of this one. So I'm going to go a little high. Remember the high is shorting the signal. So yes. And this is the way you will, and that's why I like to play, you know, and have this, because if I raise this one now to 80%, so we have a 10%, 11% in this one, and 84% in this one. Let's take a look at that waveform. It's almost 50-50, right? So this is how you can play to change the pulse width. If I go in the other way, now on resistor 2, remember, I'm calling it just the way I have it on on the first um, I should have renamed that but uh, just remember the the way it is on our on our um, first graph or first circuitry now let's take a look at that so the waveform is now going up and down super fast so that's why you know having this uh, simulation it can save you a lot of time so what is the pulse width that I wanted to do? Remember, we have this in seconds. I can change that time base as well to read differently. But we can then now say, okay, I'm going. I want to get, you know, what is 80% of 20,000? Let's say, you know, it's an 18k resistor. And what is uh? Do I have almost the same thing on both? So I I need to. Do I want a short uh, pulse width? The frequency is we can also play with that with the resistors and you saw that here the less it was it's going to make a wider um, pulse width and also we can have a quick uh, you know a quick res response so this is the way we place with the pulse uh, uh, generator and with this software hopefully this uh, takes some of that um, doubts away otherwise please leave comments on and the three five which i think i've taken enough time for this class for discussing this so hopefully that clears out those doubts we can close this i also wanted to show and i'm going to save the changes on that before we go into the class again i have also a spark and this is a nice uh, software from the same company you don't need to get this one i got this one for myself just yes, because uh, I want to show you a little more of what electricity can do on, on a component. So what we have here is we are using a, a, di a center diode. And OK, it tells you even what everything is in here. I'm a center diode. And it will tell you this is an I am an amp meter. And this is a wire and what it does. So this is a very basic uh, tool, but it's also good for Again, showing you what animations can 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 do. So if we play this, this is a, a voltage regulator. So let's say you have a um, LED tail light. This is pretty much how they control the voltage to a LED tail light circuitry wise. So it's gonna have you know something that regulates most likely a diode center in some resistors and capacitors remember the capacitors what the capacitor do is to keep a voltage to a level even if it drop for a second or so that capacitor will discharge 
whatever is necessary or bring it back and to keep the voltage on one level not for enough time but let's say you know if i put a capacitor big capacitor in, in this circuit and i turn the battery off it might keep it on for half a second and then turns off but that might be enough for the system to turn back on and these to stay on and that's what the capacitors function is pretty much the resistors are in in place in here to control the you know the load make sure the voltage goes down to what we need and the center diode is a voltage regulator i am supplying as you can see here 18 volts we have a well, i have an ammeter in here so we can see what is the amperage before this resistor then i have another resistor in here in place and that will be the amperage on there this is the amperage on the diode center uh, so center diode and this is just a voltage uh tester or voltage meter so we know what is the voltage on the whole circuit and i also put one here so we know what is on this part of the circuitry too so this is running we can change the voltage and let me show you that i can go down to like um let me see it's, it's a little hard to maneuver in here but let's say five volts i can be in five volts and obviously a circuit will whole five volts you say well that's pretty easy well that all depends if i start playing with here again uh let's say if i want to put you know a one kilo ohm resistor here you see how now even i have six volts but now the voltage is only three volts so changing the resistor changes a lot and that's why i like to use this other software for you guys so you understand more what the changes on circuit three can do before you apply it or why is that in there if you did yourself uh reverse engineers uh, circuit you can kind of like put it together and see how it works you know put a load in a set of the computer just to see the voltage and make it work so that's how i teach myself a lot of stuff you know it's not everything is online you know it's like a lot of stuff is sit down think resolve the situation so it's just it's, it's nice so let's put ourselves, I, I mean, put the 5K resistor here again. And I can play with the, with the capacitor, I mean, sorry, with the resistors and it will change the voltage. But so what I wanted to show here, if I go a little less than six, it's four volts, look at the gate kind of like the gate let's we're going to call gate it's just a center diode so the center is now it's not opening because it's less voltage we can see the movement going in through resistors one and two but this is close it's no movement zero amps and that's why i have the amperage so we got 689 micro microamps going in through almost both of these ammeters zero going to the center diode because this is the voltage regulator because we got low voltage. But if I increase these, look at as I increase, so at 10 volts, that gate is now allowing voltage to go through. And obviously, since we got a negative and a positive, that is a load. So we got a 5.0 milliamp now load in there. So this is draining whatever the circuit is, is whatever voltage or amperage is not necessary to stay in the circuit to keep it at five volts. And the way this setup is, is good because I can go up to like, you know, even 30, 30 volts and look, 30 volts. You can see this resistor again, this is very nice, this animation because this resistor is the one that's taking the hit. Like look at the wire, it's getting hot. And that's, that is true. If I keep going, look what happens. Oof, 36 volts, I blew that wire or resistor, whatever was weaker. So let me stop this and play it again. But before that, let's lower the voltage. So again, the less voltage, we're gonna work, you know, with 14 volts. You can see everything is green. Everything is happy. This circuit is happy. It's all the wiring is done correctly. It's no heat produced, excessive heat produced because the resistor will heat up. That's the way they dissipate whatever is not necessary to go through, right? So that's the way the resistor work. But again, this is the way uh, five volt 
center diode will work as a voltage regulator. And that's another, you know, simulation that I wanted to share as we go more advanced. But, you know, this is very good for you people, for all, for all of us to, you know, how it works. Why is doing that? That's pretty much how it does it. It's allowing amperage going through, putting himself as a load to keep the five volts around. So the less voltage on the battery, the less it opens up. That's the way the center diode works. And when they're reverse uh, polarity like this one, if I put these onto a computer, there is some uh, center diodes that go up to 30 volts because the insides and internals on the computer, they already got, you know, resistors and other diodes that the main one is just there for spikes to keep fre frequencies away from that 13.4 volts. They got a, a, a heavy voltage, so, so a heavy rate center diode in reverse polarity. So if something goes higher than 25 or 30 volts, it will just go through the center diode to ground. And it will just heat up the diode, but it will protect the computer. And if it's just too much, it will blow the center diode. So that's the way it works in there. Okay, guys, so this is enough for the simulations. Now we're going to the class itself. Let me see. Yep. Yep. Just to keep myself on the way that I want to do the class. All right, so today we're going to talk about MOSFETs. On last class, we were talking about, you know, bipolar transistors. These are unipolar transistors. So no more NPM, no more PMP. This is a single layer transistor. Um, a lot of time, and I have seen, you know, people talking about, you know, the gate as the base. And so let's keep it the way it is. You have a gate, a drain, and a source. Because otherwise you are going to start getting confused. And I think it's better if we keep the the descriptions that you will find it any, any, anywhere. Even some computer, they got the G stamp very strong on on the circuitry. As they do on, on the bipolar transistors, they put the base in there too. And sometimes everything. So remember, uh, these are pretty close. Uh, the gate on these MOSFETs is completely uh, isolated, as you can see here, from the drain and the source. So these are the symbols of each of these transistors. So we have a P, which is going to uh, be activated with a low signal. And then the N, which is activated with a high signal. I already tell you what G means D and S. So the common types of insulated gate fed MOSFET, which is used in many different of electronic circuits, is called metal oxide semi semiconductor field effect transistor. That's the whole name MOSFET for short. Um, the IG fed or MOSFET is a voltage control field effect transistor that differs from a J fed and that it has a metal oxide gate electrode which is electrically isolated from the main semiconductor the n channel or the p channel that's what we call now and it start to mpn now it's p channel or n channel by a very high uh, very thin layer of insulated material usually silicon dioxide uh, dioxide commonly known as glass this ultra thin isolated metal gate electrode can be thought as one plate of, of, of a capacitor. The insulation, the isolation of the controlling gate makes the input resistance of the MOSFETs extremely high. That's very important. Way up mega ohms. And you can check that because it's just like I, like I said, it's really, really isolated and they're really good. But they're also very fragile. So we'll see that as we go. Um, we can read a little more about the gate. The terminal is electrically isolated from the main current. Uh, again, the same isolation. And I was uh, in a class this week, a webinar about the new MOSFETs that are actually fabricating. It's, it's impressive. Like we used to use IGBTs because of the high voltage for, you know, like 
like the electric vehicles in, in our field, uh, you know, automotive. Uh, I give it these were the ones that we're being using because it's the only one that are capable of handling, you know, thousands of volts. Now they're fabricating uh, M6 glass MOSFET that can actually hold more voltage than an IGBT, which is impressive. I mean, it's technology, right? I love electronics and I love technology. So I'm very excited as you guys to do these classes because it's also a way for myself to, you know, uh, refresh my memory, helping others as well. So it's helping you, helping me. And I hope that a lot of people uh, keeps uh, subscribing to the channel. It's actually very, very humble for myself to see the response of you people, of, you know, of all you. I'm not sure if it's the right uh, way of putting it. You people, sorry, it's this. I, I'm from Costa Rica, so disregard those words if it's not if they're not correct. I'm saying it. All you people, I really like the response that you've been. Uh, given to my channel. Thank you so much. And I really appreciate that. That helps me a lot and and also push me forward to keep doing these classes. All right, so this is a little of more if you guys want to read about the JFED and MOSFETs, the high input resistance. And well, this is something I would really like to say, you know, the high input resistance can easily accumulate large amounts of a static charge resulting in the MOSFET becoming easily damaged. And that's a that's a very important part in there. And why I wanted to say it is because of the same thing that handles, uh, you know, high resistance, it can accumulate large amounts of a static charge and it blows it away because it's, it's not made to hold any electricity in there. So, but we'll see the solution for that. So if you see any, this is the basic configuration of a N channel or a P channel. Again, they work with voltage only. You don't, not again, I didn't say that. The difference or the big difference in between these ones and the BGT transistors, are this one, they don't need amperage to work, just voltage. So only tension. Obviously it's gonna be always a little bit in there, but truly it's not, it's isolated. But you know, since we have voltage, there will be some trying to get in there, but not not really on the, on the perfect world. Um, since the gate is completely isolated, so on this, we, if we connect an oscilloscope at the gate, we'll see zero to five volts. So <clears throat> on the gate, as different from the uh, BGT, when we were checking at the bottom of the transistor, and we were seeing, you know, the zero to seven or 12 to 11, three. Now we will be seeing the zero to five because it's not the voltage drop across any, any, any diode, right? So that is why we have the zero to five square form. And these are examples of connections that you will see. Um, this is an example of a MOSFET being used as a switch. And we'll be using it uh, for a lot more uh, applications of where you think. I wanted to do something with this uh, trainer for the next class. I have so much here coming, but I'm sorry. I got delay on the mail, uh, USPS, sorry. <laughs> Um, in this circuit arrangement, arrangement and enhancement mode and channel MOSFET is being used to switch a simple lamp on and off. Could also be an LED. The gate input voltage BGS, and that's just uh, the letters of, is taken to an appropriate positive voltage level to turn the device, and therefore the lamp load is either on, BG is equal to positive voltage, or to zero voltage level to turn the device off. BGS equals zero volts. So that's what we've been seeing here uh, on the activation. If the resistive load of the lamp was to be replaced by an inductive load, such as a coil, solenoid, or a relay, a flywheel diode, and that's the next uh, thing that we'll see. Look at, at this diagram right here. So the diode, uh, sorry, the transistor itself has no protection. This is a very basic uh, circuit. So it's no, um, motor because remember when you have a motor it's a spinning and we'll always try to generate some voltage feedback through the uh, coming back so we need to protect the mosfet against that because any voltage residual voltage in here a static electricity result it can damage it really easy 
and why that's why you know if we keep going down again if you guys want to read this i'm going to leave it on the screen for a little bit if you want any of the information you see on my classes if you uh, like to have it i'm more than happy to share it so just you know shoot me an email to i'm going to put my email on the, on the uh, link as well as some um, mike my name i know is reading differently but it's mike m-a-i-c that's the way you know my father and my mom put put my name on so in costa rica so just mike and um so again my email is m-a-i-c dot zalazar which spells s-a-l-a-z-i-r at gmail.com i don't care about sharing my my gmail if you guys are looking for help um i understand that i work and i it's a lot of tremendous amount of comments and everything and so i will be trying to help as much as possible but help yourself if he's any of you guys and my channel subscribers can help others please please do as well i will try like i said as much as i can to help you and to share the information so no problem all right so we are going to show you another uh, configurations and connections of uh, we have the uh, p channel mosfet thus far we have looked at the n channel mosfet as a switch where the mosfet is placed between which is the most common application using the the, the n channels we're not going to be looking many p channels uh mosfets on on automotive the n channel is the most common one so it's placed between the load and the ground this also allows for the mosfet gate drive or switching signal to be referenced to ground low side switching p channel mosfet switch uh yeah, which is the way of the P channel is switch. Uh, P channel MOSFET switch, but in some applications, we require the use of a P channel enhancement mode MOSFET where the load is connected directly to ground. In this instance, the MOSFET switch is connected between the load and the positive supply rail. Yeah, well, so now we know that we will be working with that. Read a little bit of the description that I have here for the uh, P MOSFETs. I just wanted to scroll a little down. This is again just a normal connection using a P channel MOSFET as a switch, the same application, different way to connect it because even though it's using the same or producing the same um, result on and off signal, it's connected differently because it's going to ground. The other one is going to positive or vice versa, right? And this is where we start to, you know, to play with more uh, advanced ways of uh, MOSFETs, what they call complementary uh, MOSFET or for motor controllers. The two MOSFETs are configured to produce a bidirectional switch from a dual supply with a motor connected between the common drain connection and a ground reference. So let me just take a look of here. So what are we seeing in here? This is a uh, yeah, this is uh, commonly used for um, industrial. You will see this in the industrial panels when the BC, uh, sorry, the DC motors, most of the DC motors that you see for uh, HVAC and so are control. You will be seeing this this type of, uh, of configuration. So it's called complementary MOSFET motor controller not much on automotive i still want to put up here because it's very nice uh to see the configuration and we need to start understanding that you see how they're using two methods on a different um configuration a p channel and an n channel to produce uh one um one signal you know to move the motor so they keep the signal low and high by that way so it's a very, very interesting setup. I don't want to go too deep into that because we're not there yet. We cannot, I, I don't want, that's why I went a little fast. This is very um, intricate. So let's take it a slow, but you know, I want to present direction of uh, um, voltage. And now we can see the reverse direction because when they're applying it, they keep the motor spinning one way or the other one right so this is why a three-phase motor will use and so 
I also wanted to present, you know, this is a, a data sheet from uh, J377. So this is, you know, the gate to train. And as we can see here, this is a P-channel MOSFET, but look at what we have here. And that's why I wanted to show you that. You'll see, okay, wait, wait, we didn't have that before. So if we see from one, which is the gate, they have two diodes, two diodes. It looks like two center diodes. That's exactly where they are. So they have a protection for that static electricity to be dissipated. So if we see the, uh, the P-channel capable of handling 5 amp and up to 20 amp pulses. So this is a very, very capable uh, power MOSFET because as you can see, it can handle five amps and up to 20 amp pulses. So if we want to use this for the ignition coils, perfect, right? No, we have no problem. And why is this one so capable? Because, I mean, why is it different? It's that clamping that we're seeing in there. So as we can see an image in pin one, which is the gate and the drain, and the drain, which is pin two, sorry, the pin one, gate pin two drain and pin three serves. It has in the pin one, it has a double center and this is called clamping. So that's double center and there is no this way, not that way, nothing is moving in here. So it will make go back to what the next part is. So the reason of that clamping is to protect the gate against any voltage spikes. The diodes between the diodes between two and three are called a damper. The purpose of this is to dissipate in the leftover voltage, so no damage to the MOSFET. Pin three should be a direct power to 12 volts. That is to supply the drain at pin two when the activation of the gate happens. Again, when the gate closes, we will have uh, voltage, as it says in there, from the drain. Well, let me make sure I'm saying it right. Pin three should be a direct power. Yes, the source. So am I saying the pins correctly? Yeah, pin three is the source. Yeah, yes. It's, I'm sorry, guys. I'm reading and thinking and talking is sometimes a little hard. But so we see where we're talking about, you know, as we will have a 12 volts power steady waiting for the transistor to be activated. I'm moving my finger. I should be moving the mouse. So the source ready the gate to be activated to move that power to the to this uh drain i mean as this word says this is pretty easy source drain and gate right so i think that's going to be really easy to understand more than the collector emitter that was a little weird term uh, terminology at least for me this is more like okay drain i know a drain that's what it drains right the source is but should be providing power, right? So, oh, perfect. And remember, this is on the P channel and the N channel is a little different and be providing ground, but whatever is the activation looking to be shared, right? If it's a P channel, so we will have a 12 volts. If it's an N channel, we will have a ground waiting to close the transistor to provide that ground to whatever is being activated or controlled, right? So it's just the way it works. Uh, read again what we have in here. So we got the pins to trickle the damper and what the purpose is. Low voltage activation. Let me see when the activation can happen. Low voltage activations as we remember from pin three should be a direct power they supply to, to supply the drain and pin two when the activation, low voltage activation as well, the low voltage activation is uh, where we refer as zero to five volts. And let me see, yes, and I put together, um, this is something that I want to share with you guys. This is an example of, um, let me see if I can lower the size a little, perfect. So this is from a 2003 RAV4 that I was working, um, I don't know, maybe six months ago, and I had this, this um, that schematic. This is a reverse engineer schematic that I did, and this is how they, Voltage supplied for, let me see if I am saying it right. Yeah, the voltage supplied for this uh, RAV4 works. So we have the voltage regulator. I uh, put also in here uh, the pins uh, on what connector. This is connector, sorry, I, I made it with the, 
Apple Pencil on my uh, iPad. So we have the schematic of the voltage regulator for RAV4 2003, battery pins. Battery is pin one on connector E8. Ignition is pin two and 16 on the same connector eight. We have grounds on pins uh, three, 21 on connector four, and then pins one, eight, 17 on connector E5. All right, guys, I was saying, sorry, I gotta go and get water because you got a small heater in here because this room, it gets very cold, but this the small heater got this room like in 100 degrees. <laughs> All right, so this is a good example, even though I said before that we have some um, applications that don't use the uh, positive uh, transistors. I also wanted to show some of the ones that I do. Let me make sure I am saying it that correctly. And I forgot to mention too, some of the um, differences on the P channel and the N channel. So let me go to uh, the first image. So one way of looking at the differences in here is the P channel will have the arrow of the diode facing out and the N channel will be having the arrow facing in. That's a very easy way to know which uh, of the uh, transistor we're working with just by the symbol, right? So if we go right here, so we're working with two, remember, I wrote out P channels. So these are two P channels, right? And I said they're not really frequently used. Well, again, not frequently. Depends. This is a 2003. Depends on what they're using. They will be. So, yeah. They're not really common here. We work in a lot of Toyotas and a lot of rough wars. This is a very common car. And in Central America, Latin America, they're still going on even in here in Virginia. We, I work in rough wars, 23 up to 2000, I mean, 18, 19, 20, right? So, they're cars that were made forever. Corollas, rough wars, Camrys really good cars and that's what i wanted to share this so this is a um, voltage regulator we have the battery voltage uh, path and then we have also the ignition so coming into these and let me just uh, explain a little bit because i will be getting this computer uh, i think i still have one of these ones in here let's do this Let's not talk up about too much of the whole situation. You guys look at the uh, diagram. I will be connecting this computer and we can go with the camera facing at the um, uh, computer and we will uh, check the whole activation of the battery circuit, the ignition circuit, and see why is this IC, how it works, how it receives the signal. Because as we can see, you guys will be like, hey, what is this? And because we haven't seen this and that's what i'm going to go a little a little dip more that is an inductor why is an inductor in there is to filter the signal and i'm going to discuss so we got us this is a, a center diode and this is in reverse polarity as we can see here anything that goes on this specific center diode in here anything above 25 volts will be uh, opening the center diode and then just being dissipated by the ground, right? Remember, it's a very short period of time. So we just take it open and dissipate that voltage, keeping that voltage at 13 for a maximum of 17 or whatever, right? We can see that with a computer on and our leads in there, I will be raising the voltage. I got, you know, a voltage supply that can go up to, I think it's 32 volts, correct? Yeah. so. In the maximum amperage and 32 volts is 3.2 amps for a computer. We are working in what half an amp maximum 0.7. I have seen some of the new ones with the direct injection, so no problem, right? So we have a capacitor in here. I didn't follow more because it wasn't necessary for our voltage regulator. This is actually controlled by the ignition. As you can see, we have, you know, that's why the uh, inductor is in here. So what the inductor does, it takes any spikes that we have on that signal and makes it clean. And we can see that 
on even on voltage regulators. I have one coming for uh, Chrysler. I might be working with you guys on that. That has also a tr uh, transformer and some filters. Those those inductors. That's what they call filters, and you will see those very commonly used on uh, computers. So filter inductor, same same thing. They have a very low resistance and they're just in place to take and make the signal clean. So if you have uh, an activation like you know coming from a controller that is making it you know um, 12 um, 12 to 0 volts a square way but the uh, pulse width of that signal or the hertz on on that signal right remember the how can I say that so you guys understand me better because it's not just pulse width it's the frequency of the signal the computer is pulse in a 12 to 0 volts to make a 5 volts that's the way most of the new regulators work and they use an inductor to take that square wave and just make it almost perfectly straight if i go and put a um a oscilloscope you will see maybe 40 millivolts of ripple just really minimum but i mean we're talking about 0 to 12 and it makes it a steady 5 volts or in the case of this uh, Toyota, we have one inductor from here, and this IC or you know controller. This is just a chip controller. It has a control signal before and after. So what is happening before and what is happening after? Where we have you know another uh, inductor here. This is the voltage uh, regulator. We have one uh, pn uh, sorry one p channel j377 and that's what i choose this uh um, transistor in here to show you so we are cleaning the signal this is just to clean the signal 13 volts so it's here because we're going to be using that 13 volts through an inductor to produce that 5 volts so toyota uses that I have one. I'll show you guys in the next slide. So I have, I know I have one. I should have it ready for you guys here. But this, again, this is, I told you it was more in the computer than hands on work. But I will have, next time we work in a computer, okay? And this is what I wanted to do for the next class. Not just this Toyota, I will be probably showing you on a Nissan and maybe a, on a, a Suzuki and Toyota, maybe three computers we can do. We like, Let's see how time goes, right? Because I don't want to make two super long classes. I'm already tired. I worked the whole week, so uh, it's, it's been going on with this video is over an hour. So we can see that we have the IC is controlling both of these transistors by the gate. So it will be providing. It's a P signal, so we're looking for the low signals. Um, am I saying this correctly? Make sure it's a P. Yeah, it's a P channel, so it activates with a low signal. Oop, too much. So we have uh, a low signal act activation. Most likely it's going to be a 0 to 5 signal here to activate those two transistors. And then both of the sources of source on is 13 volts looking through a coil to produce the voltage. So these two uh, transistors are being used as voltage regulators. And if we go back to the data sheet that we saw, uh, where was it? No, I don't have this data sheet, I'm sorry. They're most commonly used for that reason on, on many of the computers used as a voltage regulator because of the capabilities of the, of the transistor. This IC controller in here is changing the pulse width or again frequency of that 0 to 12 or 0 to 5 volts. I don't remember it correctly. I think it's a 0 to 12 to produce. Guys, I'm actually just talked with when I had this computer because I want to make sure that I don't. Uh, I think it was zero, 0 to 12, if I am correctly. Yeah, this the way this Toyota works, 
this IC is actually sending a 0 to 12 volts. Yeah, that's what we have here, 0 to 12 pulsing. You know, it's controlling the gate on a 0 to 5, right? And then is the signal, since we have a 13 volts, yes, I, I don't have to remember, it's right here. That's what I put the 13 volts, right? So we have battery voltage or ignition voltage through a coil, which is now filtering this voltage to be steady. And then when this one activates, it's going to be on and off and on and off and on and off, depends on how many times this controller switches it. But that is also changing. Let's say, you know, if the frequency to produce 5 volts is 104 hertz right per second so that's zero to 12 it's going to be 104 times in one second it will produce five volts now and it start to do that it's activating it you know 160 hertz per second to produce a 3.4 volts and that's how they do it those two capacitors in here again to filter and to keep that five volts in case it's a drop on the voltage for any moment on time. That capacitor will kick in and keep that voltage steady. So that's what those two are in there for. All right, guys, uh, what else? Oh, yeah, I wanted to show, you know, since we're been discussing about cap uh, capacitors, the most common capacitors that we'll see on computers are the electrolyt uh, electrolytic capacitors. There are many, many different kinds. I mean, you can have, uh, 10 volts, 100 volts, 50 volts, as this one in here. This is a 200 and 200 microfarads, uh, microfarads. No, it's actually 2,200 microfarads, 16 volts. And you can see this is the data sheet. This is just the one that I picked, you know, out of anyone in in the internet. This is what you need to do. I mean, you take a board and it says, you know, that the most common. This is a very good brand. That's uh, Nichicon. It's a very good brand of, of, of capacitors. Uh, you can get this one from Mauser Electronics. I will share the link. I have bought tools and parts from them. Tons up, very good company. DigiKey also has it. So this is the most common electrolytic capacitors. These are the ones also, they are the ones more damaging computers than anything else. When the capacitors explode, it just, uh, it's, it's, an, uh, it's an acid inside the capacitor and it damages the circuitry around it. It just eats the bore. It loves the um, traces, gone. So if you stop the, if our, our car computer can really be opened up and fixed at the same day, you might be able to, to save it by four or five days or, oh yeah, I had that since a month ago. It's that checking your light and you open it up. It's pretty much garbage because electrolytic capacitors, then we have, other types, these are the most newer uh, capacitors. These are very um, precise capacitors. Those are common, uh, you know, this is a surface mount uh, capacitor type. So no more through hole like the one, the hydro, uh, electro, uh, electrolytic capacitors, they're through hole. It goes through the uh, computer board. These ones are surface mount. And as you can see here, these are now in uh, millions of farads, so millifarads, you know, part of farads, so pico farads, and micro farads. So, and they can handle, you know, up to 250 volts. So, I mean, pick your application, right? Temperature of, of operation is amazing. I mean, uh, up to 125 Cs. It's not Fahrenheit, Cs, uh, technology again. Then we have the other very commons on Computers, these are sur uh, surface ma mounted. That's the tan tantalum, tantalum. Hopefully I'm saying it right. Remember, I am Latino, so forgive me for my um, accent. And sometimes I said the word not perfectly, but hopefully you guys understand what I'm saying. And that's what I put the image in there for too. <clears throat> if you need something, just, you know, go over to the pages that I will be sharing with you. And I think I still have them open in here. Uh, no, I close it. So what I usually do to prepare for the classes, I go here and I put capacitors types. And you can see it's still my search. Sorry, I got interrupted a little bit in here. Um, was too much noise away, I mean, outside. So I just put capacitor types and I click on images, as you can see. And I just, you know, 
pick up one and I did pick up this one right here or this one as you can see it's Mauser Elect Electronics they got a very good assortment uh, you can see it's very easy the website is mauser.com you can buy yeah, a lot of electronics really really good and then they have the, the data sheet in here so if you have an, a specific capacitor that you need to know what is in there what should be the readings and just get the numbers and they will tell you exactly the uh, capacitance and then voltage you can scroll down and here applications also ordering information that's what numbers are for so again this is the data sheet for data specific capacitor and that's how I do it so you got to do your homework it's not everything um, always easy but is it can be done so guys i hope you like the content of class four i will try to keep more entertaining but we will do probably a check on the voltage uh, power supply for a computer i got like i said an eason i got a suzuki you know geo tracker suzuki same thing and then that toyota and then we see how much we can cover on one because usually when I get my hands on a computer, I start talking about center dials and explain a little bit. I will be probably doing more uh, simulation and, and um, hands on the computer. And pretty soon we will be using uh, the pulse generator because with that Toyota computer in there, we will be using it to produce a crank sensor signal and the cam sensor signal for that computer. So um, just, you know, stay tuned. Thumbs up if you like the video. Don't forget to share my content and don't forget to subscribe. See you next time. Thank you so much.